Hello everyone, my name is Adrian Fernandez from the MSP430 team, and today we're going to do our very first MSP430 Launchpad project. Um, what we're going to do is blink our LED, um, in particular uh, the red one that's on our Launchpad kit. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. So let me minimize this here and uh, open up Code Composer Studio. So Code Composer Studio is TI's Eclipse-based uh, development environment, um, or IDE. Um, when we open up CCS, the first thing it'll ask us to do is create a workspace. Um, and what a workspace is, it's essentially a folder which stores all of our Code Composer Studio projects. So I'm going to go ahead and call mine Launchpad Project. Uh, you can alternatively browse to whatever location you'd like. Um, so with that, we can go ahead and hit OK. And since this is uh, the first time we're opening up Code Composer Studio, we'll be introduced by this welcome window. Uh, there's a couple of things here that you can explore. Um, but what I'd like to do is show you a couple of the more important windows within Code Composer Studio. Uh, we can see them by clicking this little button here. Um, it'll restore two important windows, one of which is called Project Explorer. This Project Explorer window is where all of our active Code Composer Studio projects uh, will be visible. Um, so when we create our new project, uh, which we will do in a second, it'll actually populate itself here um, and we can see all of the files associated to those particular projects. Um, the second important window is here, called the Problems window. Uh, this is particularly uh, important, especially during debug. This is where all of your uh, compiler errors or warnings and other information uh, will be presented uh, down here. Um, so let's go ahead and create our first project. We could do that by uh, going to File, New, CCS Project. And this will open up our new project wizard. So here we can name our project. I'm going to call mine Blink LED. Um, we'll also have to choose which device variant we're developing on. Uh, since we're using the MSP430 Launchpad, uh, we're going to go ahead and select the MSP430 G2553. Uh, this is the device that comes pre-populated on the MSP430 Launchpad dip socket. Um, so we'll go ahead and select that one. And we can leave everything else as default. So we're creating an empty project, so we can go ahead and click on that. Then we can hit finish. We'll get a little uh, pop-up here. We can press OK for now. Um, and as you can see, the new project that we just created um, now appears in the Project Explorer window that we introduced earlier. Uh, we can expand it, see all the files associated to it. Uh, we can also see that a blank main.c file was also created um, by the new project wizard. So this is essentially a blank canvas where we will be developing our code in. Um, but since we provided a code example for you, we can go ahead and jump back to the Wikipedia page. Um, scrolling down, we can copy and paste uh, this Blink LED code example that we provided. So we can go ahead and copy it and paste it back uh, into Code Composer Studio. So we can go ahead and erase um, all that default stuff and paste in the new code. Um, so let's go ahead and use this time to walk through what each line of code does and what it represents. Uh, so the first thing that we do is we disable something called the watchdog timer. Um, and this is actually a pretty typical first thing to do. Um, so as you look at more and more code examples for your MSP430, uh, you'll notice that this particular line of code will probably be in a lot of them. Um, and what this line of code does is that it disables a watchdog timer. Um, the watchdog timer is a pretty unique peripheral and what it does is it helps to prevent your code from getting stuck in a place where it shouldn't be. Uh, so if your application for some reason gets stuck in an infinite loop, um, the watchdog timer will notice that a particular amount of time has passed and it'll actually reset your device for you um, in an attempt to free up the device and, and, and fix whatever issue happened. However, since this particular application, you know, we're blinking an LED, it's pretty simple. Uh, we actually don't need that functionality. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is disable that watchdog timer uh, using this line of code here. The next thing we do is we're going to configure the peripherals that we need for this particular application. 
Um, right now, since it's a simple application, all we need to do is configure the general purpose input output pin. Um, and we can do that using the P1DIR register. So each of the peripherals uh, integrated into the MSP430 device, whether it's your general purpose input output ports, your analog digital converters, your timers, serial communication modules, you name it, uh, those are each defined and configured by a set of registers. And registers are essentially bits and bytes. Um, in this particular instance, the P1 direction register, or P1DIR, configures your general purpose input output port as either an input or an output. And we can configure it as an input or an output by writing a particular, uh, writing, writing a one or a zero into a particular bit of this 8-bit register. Um, so as you can see here, P1DIR is made up of 8 bits, so it's a byte. Um, and we can configure a particular pin as an input or an output by writing a 1 or a 0 to it. So in order to figure out which pin we need to configure, let's take a look at our launchpad. So here I've actually got a screenshot of, of my launchpad here. Um, since we want to blink this LED, um, we can see that this LED 1 is actually tied to port 1.0 thanks to the silkscreen label here. So we know that we need to configure port 1.0. So bit 0 of port 1 needs to be configured as an output since we're essentially outputting current through that pin which will then propagate into the LED. So port 1 uh, we know that we need to configure bit 0 of that port, um, so we do that by writing a 1 to this particular bit here of that particular register. Um, so that's what's being described here in the comments. Uh, so P1DIR, again, is made up of 8 bits. We're writing a 1 to the particular one that we want to set as an output port, um, and uh, we then convert this binary value into its hex representation. So that's how we get 0x01 here. So we're essentially telling it which one we need to configure as an output. Um, you'll also notice this interesting looking operand. Uh, this operator is the OR operator. And what it does is that it'll set the bit that, uh, that we write a 1 to while leaving everything else um, untouched. So we don't want to really do anything else with the other port pins. Um, all we want to do is set this pin or this bit. So that's why we're using the OR operator here. So what this line of code does, just to sort of recap, is that it sets your port 1.0 pin as an output, and we do that by setting that bit as a 1. Great. So now that all of the peripherals that we need for this particular application is, is all configured, uh, we can then go down to this for loop here. And this for loop, as you can see, has no parameters. And what that means is that it'll loop indefinitely. So all of the contents inside of this for loop will essentially just loop um, forever. So within this for loop, we've got two uh, lines, of lines of code. Uh, the first one is p1 out. So p1 out is yet another register associated to our general purpose input output port. Um, and what this does is that it actually um, sets the, the particular bit as either a high or a low. Um, since we've configured it already as an output, what we're going to go ahead and do is essentially toggle that pin um, as a high or a low, as on or off. And we can use that using the XOR operator, um, which is what this looks like. And what this operator does is, is essentially toggles the pin that you want to toggle. Um, so if it was a 0 previously, it'll toggle it to a 1. If it was a 1 previously, it'll toggle it back to 0. And this is what's going to help us get that blink effect on our LED. Um, so by default, the uh, port pin is usually, is usually off. So the first time we encounter this line of code, we're going to toggle it from a 0 to a 1, thus turning that LED on. Um, so again, we want to toggle that exact same bit that we configured as an output, and that's why we're passing that same hex value into the P1 out register. Um, so again, the first time we encounter this code, we're essentially turning that LED on. Uh, once the LED is turned on, we've got a second for loop here, and we can see that this for loop is actually nested inside of this bigger for loop. Um, and what this second for loop does 
is essentially creates a delay. Um, so the for loop doesn't have anything inside of it, we're just waiting for this condition to be met. And the condition here is that we've got a variable that we configure as a zero, or initialize as a zero, we then increment it one at a time each time this for loop iterates, and it won't break out of this loop until i is greater than or equal to 20,000. So we're essentially going to loop here about 20,000 times. And finally, once that condition is met, we loop back out and again break into this greater for loop. And, uh, and what's going to happen is we're going to basically create this delay, LED is on for this amount of time, break out of it, then we toggle that LED back off. Um, so now it just went from on to off, go back to this delay again, then toggle, then delay, then toggle, then delay. And these two lines of code will essentially create that blink effect. Um, and we can actually play around by uh, changing this value here. If we make this value larger, the LEDs will toggle more slowly. If we make the value smaller, the LEDs will toggle more quickly. Um, and really, that's it. So you can see that the, uh, the code here is pretty simple. Um, so now that we understand what's going on, we can go ahead and click this green debug button here. And what that'll do is that it'll compile our code and download it into our MSP430 device. Uh, we can go ahead and hit OK and hit Proceed. And now our code is going to be downloaded into our MSP430 device. Great. So we've actually left the code editing view of CCS and are now in the debug view of Code Composer Studio. We can jump back between the code editing view we were in previously and the debug video by clicking these tabs here. Um, so now that we're in the, uh, the debug view, uh, we can go ahead and hit this green play button, and this will ca cause our code to run. So once we click on that, we'll actually see our red LED blinking. Uh, so congratulations, you just blinked your very first LED. Um, so as you can see, it wasn't too, too bad, um, especially now that we understand what's happening with each line of code. Um, so we can go ahead and hit stop here, um, and that'll actually bring us back into the edit view. So just to play around, let's go ahead and, and uh, change this value to 10,000. So we're going to make that number half as large. Um, and that will actually cause our LED to blink twice as fast. So again, we'll go back to our debug view and hit play again. And as you can see, our LED is now blinking two times faster. While we're here in the debug view, let's take a look at some of the more important buttons and, and windows. Uh, here was our play and uh, pause button. Um, so this is, allows you to sort of start and pause your code um, during, during execution. Uh, this will terminate the debug session. Uh, we also have a couple of uh, stepping buttons. So we can step into functions, step over them. Uh, we can also go into the assembly language and step through that, through that code as well. Um, so these are pretty typical debug buttons that you may have already, uh, may, may be already be familiar with. Um, here we also have a watch window, so we can actually watch variables here. Um, and that way we can actually see what the values are of particular variables, um, even particular registers within your MSP430 device. Um, down here is our code editing window, so we can actually see what our code looks like. Um, we can actually set breakpoints as well by double clicking on a particular line of code um, or right clicking here. We can actually add a breakpoint. And once we do that, you can see that once this line of code executes, it'll pause our code. Um, so, so breakpoints are very helpful um, whenever we're trying to debug our application. And down here is just a typical general purpose console. Uh, so you'll just get various status updates of your debug session here as well. Um, so with that, that's our very first project. Again, thanks for watching and congratulations, and hopefully this is the first of many other MSP430-based applications. Um, so thanks for watching and good luck.